carpet cleaning. We are out in uh, Portland, Oregon today doing ourselves some affordable carpet cleaning. Let's take a quick look at what we got here. We got this, uh, this is probably like the family room. Sort of, yeah, family room, we'll call it that. This would be like the formal front room area in here. You can see that there's a bit of debris on the carpet and we're just gonna go get all that stuff up and out of here. Um, they want it nice and sanitized, you know, for the, the new baby when it comes along. And we got ourselves a bedroom in here. Closet, hallway, second bedroom with closet, and then finally we have ourselves a third bedroom and a closet. So in total we've got six areas that we're going to be cleaning up here today. And we are going to take a three-stage approach, however I am going to use uh, a grande groom for agitation, so three phases, pre-vacuum, solution, grande groom, then we fire up the truck, we finish it off with stage three of going through and giving it a good extraction, stage three, I'm at phase three, I gotta get the terminology right here eventually. So uh, before we really get going here with phase one, which is our pre-vacuum to get as much dry soil out of the carpeting as possible, which uh, according to the IICRC, um, with a vac good vacuum, you can get about 80% of all the debris out of the carpeting with just a vacuum. So that leaves you wondering, guys who don't vacuum, if they are rinsing enough to get all that mud out of your carpet after they get it wet, or are they leaving a large portion of that mud still in your carpeting? Anyways, at least you get the top clean, right? The top surface of it looks clean, it must be clean. Forget about all the mud that's down below. Anyways, um, so the one thing that I do, and then what I found that most people either do a very lousy job of with their vacuum cleaners is not capable of doing it, is to take the vacuum cleaner along this edge, along the baseboards. In fact, you probably wanna come down here and turn Come down here and I've already done it but what happens is a lot of debris just kind of collects along the edge because people generally they don't come at it in this direction they're coming at the walls in this direction and they're just shoving all the the crud and, and debris and things up against the corner um but one thing that I do sometimes do um I'm not sure if it, this job will necessarily need it but um, there are times where debris gets so stuck in there that um, you just need to go through and break off your hose and give it a good extraction with just the hose along the edge to pick the debris up. Phase one has been completed and we have over a half a bag or not quite half, yeah about half a bag, curvy bag of just debris and dirt and sand and stuff that came out of the carpeting. Now the carpeting didn't really look that soiled but believe me when that stuff turns to mud um, it can cause odors and it can cause all sorts of stuff and, and that's really what causes all the uh, wear patterns in the, the, the carpeting as well so it's very crucial to get as much of that uh, debris out as possible. We always take uh, double passes or at least overlapping passes to get as many um, buys, you know, um, pass buys as we can to get lift up as much of that debris as possible. Now we're moving on to phase two which comprises of our pre-spray solution that we're putting down. We are using the sodium carbonate and peroxide solution for sanitation purposes. It's very green so kids and animals can play around on the carpeting without any adverse effects or anything and um, yeah and for that purpose uh, it is very green for the environment as well it's not going to cause any uh, uh, like what does soap do it breaks water tension so it's not going to cause any water skippers or anything to drown in the water if it gets out into the environment so 
We're gonna go ahead, um, phase, part A of phase two is to put down a pre-spray solution and we move on to part B, which is using, um, this is actually not a grindy groom. I got this to test it out because it has more bristles than a grindy groom, but it has a similar stiffness. So I was curious just to uh, pick up one of these guys and give it a go and see what kind of results. Um, I hear that a lot of guys really like these things. And so I thought, oh yeah, I'll give that a try. And you could probably double over on wool airy rugs with it as well. And it doesn't have quite the uh, agitation that a grande groove would be generating on it is either. However, you do get the benefit of having multiple bristles running over the, the air area. So it's getting lots of thorough agitation and getting that uh, cleaning solution thoroughly into the uh, fibers of whatever you're trying to clean up here. Okay, so my uh, evaluation of this broom is that the agitation it produces is probably four to five times that of a grundy groom. Um, but it also means that you gotta put a lot more double grease into uh, running it. I am winded and all I did was three little rooms in this hallway here. I still got the family room back there and the front room over here. So what we're gonna do, um, now that uh, uh, parts A and B of phase two are completed on this side of the house. I'm going to go ahead and move on to the other house and, and um, continue doing the exact same thing. We'll put down our pre spray in part A and then part B, taking that beast and uh, agitating the carpets. Now, uh, one thing that I, you do get from the agitation that um, is better than the grinded groove, I was noticing, is that uh, service spots were literally vanishing by uh, pushing that thing over it. So. It really does help with the uh, soil suspension that is occurring there. So uh, uh, building up the Sanima, I think, to uh, push that broom around is going to uh, benefit you greatly. Um, I'm just hoping <laughs> I'm gonna last the rest of today and that eventually my stamina will uh, pick up a bit more. I know some of you guys hit the gym every single day or whatever. Um, whatever it takes to keep that stamina up, keep you feeling good. The last thing you want to do is feel like crap at the end of the day. And I try to do everything myself not to have that happen. So uh, make sure on these warm days you guys stay hydrated, drink plenty of water because uh, I have a tendency to drink a lot of coffee and that kind of dehydrates you. Even though you don't necessarily feel dehydrated, it plays a big role into how worn out you feel at the end of the day as well, just because um, your body really needs those liquids to keep you hydrated and to uh, keep producing the energy that you need to keep pushing through.